Okay, I'm going to talk about uh, two-dimensional arrays. Okay. What you could think about a uh, two-dimensional array is kind of like the structure would be kind of like what you would see with a uh, table or like what you see in a spreadsheet. You have uh, columns and rows associated with it. When we were looking at a one-dimensional array, we basically just had one index um, that we used or an offset that we used to determine a specific element in the array, stored in the array. With two-dimensional arrays, we're going to have two indices or two offsets, and it's going to identify the row and the column. So for this particular type of array, this is a declaration. Uh, we'll create an array of integer uh, variables, and you're going to access them through uh, this name called temp. And for this particular array, it has four rows and three columns. Okay, so you can think of this as like a, a grid. Now, this is the declaration. So it creates an array that has 12 elements in it. Okay, and how you access it, of course, is going to be different than what we saw with um, when we were working with one dimensional arrays. Okay. So in this example, you have an array that's initialized. If you remember before, we can initialize a one-dimensional array just by like having a, a um, uh, a sequence of numbers or values and delimited with uh, curly braces, opening and closing curly braces, okay? Well, in this case, it'll show you, it says, okay, first row contains three and four, and then the next row will contain two and one. So it might not be so clear how this gets saved. So you can actually do it explicitly, write explicitly how you would actually um, initialize the array. And in this case, the first two elements represents the first row, and this is the second row. So it goes row by row. So this is a little clearer. This, this is how this would work. It would actually work the same. Where it would can this this way would work the same way where it would the first row contains these two three and a four and the second row will contain two and one okay so in this case this is a two by two array that was created it was uh, declared and initialized um, with these values okay and we'll go through and do some examples All right now how do you access a specific element in an array well what you would do is um, in this case, you specify like the name of the array, the row number, and the column number. Okay. So what you recognize here is it's the third row and four column. And the reason is is because the first row and first column is actually zero and zero. Okay. Okay. So now when you wanted to go through and actually assign values to uh, the two-dimensional array like to each element in a two-dimensional array, um, you can use a loop. And you actually, when you have a two-dimensional array, you need to use a nested loop, okay, to get to access all those elements or to set all those elements. And here's an example of that. So what I'm going to do is I'll go through and um, I'll create a little example, and we'll do a simple example where we read what we write to an array and we read from an array. So we'll go ahead and start uh, Visual Studio. Okay, Visual Studio. And I'll create a console application. So create new project, console app, next. Okay, it's on the desktop. And I'm gonna say chapter uh, underscore eight, and this will be 2D array example one, we'll say, okay, example one, okay, create, okay, as usual, uh, not now, of course, go and open this up, so delete all this out, And using namespace, I'm 
STD. And for now, we'll just do this. I'll just do a return zero and system pause because I wanted to pause at the end. Of course, you could always do uh, control F5 when you run it, and that will also pause it automatically. Okay. So here, what I want to do is I want to create an array, and I'll initialize it. And I'll just call it, call it numbers, make it integers. And I'll make it uh, two rows and three columns. Okay. And I can actually go in here and set the values, right? So what do we say? Like here's, we're going to have two rows. So one, three, five, let's say. And then we'll do two, comma, four, comma, six. So that'll be the second, um, the second row. Okay. So I'm creating an array. So this is my declaration, array declaration, my array declaration of size two by three. Okay. Six elements, right? Six elements total. Okay. So now to actually go and access those, what you need to do is you'll specify. So let's say, let's do this. Let's do C out uh, numbers. Uh, and I'll say element, we'll say zero, row zero, column one. So what are you going to display here? Can you predict what will be displayed? Okay, then we can go and run it. Uh, okay, I'll just do a system. I'll just do uh, compile and run, and there's three. So what did that do? Row zero. Here's row zero, and here's column one, okay? Because remember, it starts at, at um, um, zero is the index or the offset, okay? So how would you print this number? Four, or let's do four. Let me see out numbers. And of course, this would be column one. I'm sorry, row one and column one okay and that will display four okay and there it is three and four all right so the next thing we can do let's say we wanted to display the entire array so display entire array okay all right what we can do is we'll do a for loop We'll do integer i, and we'll say 0, and i less than 2, i plus plus, okay? But we also need to uh, cycle through, now this would give me, let's say if I use this for, you know, 0 and 1 for my two rows. Now let's say if I want to do my columns, integer j equal to 0. And how many columns do we have? Three. So I'll put in three. J plus plus. Which means, of course, that our, our offsets go from our zero, one, and two for those. Okay? Now what we want to do is C out. We'll do numbers. I. J. Like that. And then inline. Okay, so now we have a nested loop, and this will uh, display the value. So this index, or this offset, i is offset for each row. Is, should be is here. Is, and j is the offset for each column. Okay? So then we go and display that, or run it. And there it is, 3, 4, 1, 3, 5, 2, and 4, and 6, okay? Let me comment these out for now. 
because those were accessing specific items. And let me run it again. There it is, 135246, okay? Now, what if I wanted to actually make those um, to show as I would uh, display it as like, you know, row first, then the second row second. What I could do is modify this slightly. And what I want to do, I'll come down here. So we'll get a better visualization of this array. So then I'll just do a C out end line. Okay. So what happens that, you know, this goes through displays each column. And then when this is done, it'll give it an end line and then it'll go back up again and run this outer loop to display the next row. Okay. So let me run that. Okay. Oh, okay. Oh, don't put an end line here. Get rid of that. Okay, do it again. Oh, what we do need, though, we need a space. So let me put a space there, like that. Or you could do a tab or something else if you want. But we do this, and there it is. One, three, five, two, four, six. Okay. So that displays it as, you know, we might visualize it where we have a row and a column. Okay. So that's that. Now, of course, you could always do it the other way where you want to set the values. So let's do another one. And this is like the example I had in my in the textbook. So instead of setting them this way, I can do this. I can actually overwrite them. So let me do this. I'll do this. Control, copy, like this. And this will go in and I'll set the values for each element. So now instead of doing it this way, what I'm going to do is do this. I'm going to do C out. Um, I'm going to do numbers. Each element is equal to I times J. So I'm setting the values, okay? And I don't need this anymore, all right? So basically, it's just going to take whatever the column number is times the, uh, sorry, the row number is times the column number and set those. So you're going to see, you know, this should, the first element, of course, is going to be the first row, element zero, zero, is just going to be zero, zero, right? And the last one, so these values are no longer relevant, right? It's going to overwrite them with this. So overwrite um, values in array. I don't know. It's one word, two words. I'm not sure. <laughs> the values. I think it is. Values in the array. So this overwrites them and this displays them. So we run it and there it is, zero, zero and one, one. Oh, sorry, zero, zero, zero because one of the values is zero. The next one is one times one and two times two, okay? So in this case, of course, you could make it larger if you wanted to do, but that's, that's basically it. So I can actually just go through and set the values of an array, okay? And then this one is, um, display the entire array. Okay, continuing on. Now, working with functions and two-dimensional arrays. Now, this is a little bit different when you actually, what you want to do is pass a, uh, an array to a function. And one of the, oh, uh, one of the things to pay attention to here, okay, how do you pass it? Well, this is just like before, you, you specify the array identifier without subscripts. Um, and it reference the starting address of the array, okay. Uh, arrays are passed by reference, okay. Now, reference meanings you're passing the address of the array. It's just like when we had done, you know, uh, previously we talked about one-dimensional arrays. We, we always specify, we, we use the name, we just use the name um, as the argument when we, we make a function call. Two-dimensional arrays are a little bit different in how you actually... Um, uh, re uh, pass the reference to it. There's a second piece of information that you need. Um, you actually need to specify the number of rows and uh, you specify two original parameters represent the number of rows and the number of columns in each array 
Um, you also need to specify um, the the uh, the size or the number of, of columns in the array. Okay, so we'll see that. So here's an example of that. Okay, here is the uh, function prototype. Notice that you you have the square brackets here, right? Just as before. This is how you would de define a function prototype. You may not. You don't need the name. You could put it in there if you want the name of the array. Um, but basically, it's going to be integer, square bracket, and then the number of columns. Notice, this is a constant, okay? So you have to know beforehand how many columns are in the array. And I'll, I'll give you kind of a, a quick example here, okay? All right, we won't do, we won't do that one first. First, we're going to go through. Uh, today, all I'll do is I'll go and just, we'll create a, an array called sum. Um, and we'll use the, the arrays we have in our present example. So let's just go back to my code that I was writing previously. All right, back to my array example that I had before. And in this case, we had, you know, we did numbers, we overwrote the values in the array, then we displayed the entire array, okay? So let me just do this, File, save all, okay. So this is a very basic example. Now what I'll do is, um, uh, I'm actually going to do, I'll, I can leave these, that's fine. I'll just go down here and make a function call to sum. Okay, so let's do this. So I'm going to go up here. Here's a function prototype for sum. Sum. And I have an integer array, so I'm going to say integer x, square bracket, square bracket, and then the number of columns. Well, in our case, we have three. Right, you can you can make this a, um, a constant and use that. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make it a constant. Use it. So, let's do this. Uh, a constant integer and calls number of columns, and I'm gonna set that equal to three. All right, and then when I do my function prototype num calls, so I'll specify the number of columns I have. Okay. Um, function prototype, right? Oh, we also need some more information, right? <laughs> passing in number of, I'm oh, sorry, no, passing in 2D array. In 2D array. Okay. All right, so we also need one other piece of information here. Now I, now, I have the number of columns is three, so that's no problem. I also need to specify this number of rows, okay? So I have some choices here. What I could do is just create another, um, another constant, call it number of rows, or I could pass in the size. So I'll tell you what I'll do here. I'm going to create another constant, rows, okay? So you need to know that. I'll say N-U-M-R-O-W-S, okay? Like I said, you do have choices, but we're going to say two and three, all right? Two rows, three columns, because that's what I created here, okay? And, you know, these I just overwrote them, which is fine, and then I'm going to do a function call afterwards, all right? But I'm going to keep that in here. So go down here, integer, sum, and specify... Um, integer array, x, and did I call it x? I don't even need to. I'm going to leave it out here in my function prototype. You could leave it in there. You could take it out. It really doesn't matter. Usually, um, the standards, typically, you don't even put it in here because it really doesn't, it doesn't have any significance at that point. Although, it really doesn't matter. You could leave it in there, okay? So, integer x, and I have this, and then the number of columns. So, n, u, m, number of columns there it is okay so there's my function call so this time I don't specify the size of it I don't pass in the size because I created two constants that both have the size okay so now what I want to do this is going to calculate the sum of all the elements oh you know what I forgot a square bracket here all of the elements in the array so I'm going to create a variable and it can be an integer variable because our array is very uh, integer. So integer sum. I'll do array. I won't call it the same as my function name. We'll say array sum. 
and that's equal to zero. Okay. So then I'm going to go in here and I'm actually, I can do the same loop structure here. So let me do this, copy. This will traverse the whole array. So integer i, okay, okay. Except what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to say, this will be my number of rows, okay? So that way, if the size changed, all I would have to do is just change it in one place, right? Like the number of columns and the number of rows, I would change it there, which I also should do here, right? So let me do that. Num rows, num columns. So this is a better way to work with arrays. That way, if you were to change the size of your array, and what we'll do here, um, it doesn't matter. I set, I can set the values. It really doesn't matter. I don't do anything with them anyways. I could get rid of these because I don't do anything. I overwrite it immediately anyways here. But what this does is if you do number of um, rows and columns as a constant, then if you have a change, let's say I want four row, four columns and three rows, I only change it in one place. And then everywhere else it will change. Okay. So here, let me do this. This is the number of rows. Okay. And here's the number of columns. Num columns. Okay. So that's a little better than what we wrote before or what I wrote before. Okay. Num rows. So use constants here. And number of columns, N-U-M-Z-O-L-S, okay? Oh, all right. And I'll, I'll post this on, online also, all right. Okay, so number of rows, and then this is number of columns. Now, we already saw that this traverses through the whole array, right? We already showed that this works properly. So what are we going to do down here? Let's just do array sum equals um, whatever my array is called x this time it's x call whatever i want i j okay and we already know you know we did the multiplication so when we do this we know our sum is just going to be three right when we had gone through and when we displayed it we saw that when we did this calculation it just makes it three like I said, this one just gets overwritten. So you can keep this or not. Up to you. Okay. So now I modified that. And now what I want to do is return. Return array sum. Okay. And then, of course, I need to call that function. I'll do a C out. Sum of values in array equals and then i just do this i say sum and of course i gotta pass make a, a pass in the array well what is it called it's called numbers okay comma and actually that's the only thing i pass in right because everything else is a constant now i have these as constants my number of columns number of rows is constant okay uh and i need end line and there we go okay so let me run it and save all uh, we have an error oh no matching token found oh yeah right here forgot my curly brace for my loop my outer loop okay so number of that sum of values in array equals two Oh, array sum, got to keep the old value, of course, plus this. Otherwise, I'm just overwriting it. Okay, so let's do it again. And there it is, three. Okay, so that's very basic. You know, this is a function that's a very basic uh, function call using two-dimensional arrays. And you notice the difference here. We have the second curly bracket but you also need to specify the size and, and that is the number of columns okay function that sums all of the values in a 2d array okay so that's 
uh, that's good for now. So that's an example of a basic example using 2D arrays. And we'll do more uh, next time. And I'll post this online.